in the past few weeks, uh, we discussed uh, Markov chains, right? Uh, maybe uh, let's first review what is a, a Markov chain. So this is the uh, definition of a Markov chain. So for a stochastic process to be a Markov chain, actually it requires so this uh, stochastic process to have uh, uh, such a property. So as long as you know the current state of this process, then what happened in the future will become uh, what happened uh, in the past, right? Whether you know the entire history or not, it will, it will, it will not matter. So as long as you know the, the current state. So why uh, Markov chains are so important? Because uh, as long as the stochastic process has this Markov property, then uh, it allows us to analyze the stochastic process step by step, right? So that's uh, what we discussed last week. And uh, uh, more specifically, uh, the evolution of the Markov chain is governed by the so-called uh, transition probabilities, right? So here, uh, this PIJ stands for the probability that the Markov chain make a transition from state I to state J by one step. And if we organize all the transition probabilities in a matrix, then such a matrix is called a transition matrix. So there is a, a, a very important result about the uh, transition matrices uh, for Markov chain, and this uh, result is, uh, is known as the uh, chapman kolmogorov equations. Uh, this theorem, essentially, it just tells us that if you wish to know the k-step transition matrix of, uh, of a Markov chain, it is simply the k power of uh, uh, one step transition matrix, right? So that's uh, what we uh, discussed last week. And uh, uh, so if we know the k-step transition matrix, and we also argue that, so if this uh, mu zero is the initial distribution of a Markov chain, and this initial distribution times the uh, k-step transition matrix, you will have the distribution of this Markov chain uh, at the k-step. So this is also a, a very useful result we discussed the last time. And uh, uh, so last time we also uh, discussed a, a very interesting uh, behavior of, uh, of Markov chain, so which is uh, uh, about the steady state of the Markov chain. So in this example, uh, we saw that, so, so there is a Markov chain. So the Markov chain in our example, after 10 steps of transitions, but essentially, uh, the distribution of the Markov chain will no longer change the time, with, 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 with time. But to be more uh, specific, uh, to be more accurate, so actually it means that after a few steps of transition, the distribution of this Markov chain still changes, but the change would be tiny. So which means that after a few steps, this Markov chain uh, appears to converge to a distribution. And uh, this distribution no longer depends on your initial state or initial distribution. And this uh, uh, distribution is known as the limit distribution of the Markov chain. So again, for a distribution uh, to be a limit distribution of a Markov chain, it must satisfy two conditions. The first condition is that in a longer change of the time. So which means that as, uh, as this k goes large, then the k step transition probability from an arbitrary uh, state i to j will become independent of the initial state i, as long as k is large, right? And also, because uh, so there is a there is a limit, which means that when k is large, so this uh, 
transition probability from I to J by a number of steps will no longer change, so that it will have a, a limit. And this limit is, is known as the limit distribution. And then uh, we introduced another conception, so which is uh, called stationary distribution. So what is a stationary distribution? Uh, for a distribution to be a stationary distribution of a Markov chain, uh, it must satisfy uh, so this condition. So this pi times p must be equal to pi. How to understand this? So suppose that uh, the Markov chain uh, starts with uh, distribution pi. Then this pi times p stands for the distribution after one step of transition, right? Because of pi times p, pi. So which means that after one step of, after one step of transition, the distribution of this Markov chain will not change. And uh, if after one step of transition it will not change, then after two steps, or three steps, so we can we can argue uh, by induction that so the the distribution of this Markov chain will always be pi. So which means that a distribution, as long as you start with a stationary distribution, then the distribution of this Markov chain will not change. So such a distribution is is called uh, a stationary distribution. And last time uh, we also argued that the limit distribution of a Markov chain must also be a stationary distribution, right? And this is a very nice uh, property because uh, so if we know this, then it is possible for us to 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 obtain this limit distribution by solving pi times p is equal to pi, so which is known as the balance equations, right? So so then again. As long as we know a Markov chain has a limit distribution, then it is possible for us to solve balance equations to obtain this limit distribution. And uh, if the balance equation together with this normalization equation just have a unique solution, then this unique solution must be the limit distribution. That is uh, what we argued uh, last week. And I also, uh, we also uh, solve this, uh, this problem together, how to solve, uh, solve for the limit distribution. Uh, so how to solve for this uh, limit distribution uh, by solving uh, a system of linear equations and so on. So I think that's the, so we will, so this week we will start from, from, from this result. Uh, again, we know that for certain Markov chains, at least for the Markov chain in our example, it has a very appealing property. So which means that after a few steps of transition, then this Markov seems to be in a steady state. So which means that the distribution of that no longer change with time. And also, the dis this distribution no longer de depend on the initial state or initial distribution, right? So uh, then, so the question is, do all Markov chains have this property? If some Markov chains have this property and some do not have, then what Markov chains should have such a property? So this, again, this property is nice because we know that after we can solve balance equations to know the distribution of such Markov chains. We know that they, they always be there, right? So then this, so in today's lecture, so we will study uh, what kind of Markov chains should have uh, such a property. So uh, maybe let's begin with uh, a very simple example. 
So let's consider a Markov chain like this. So this Markov chain has only two states. So let's call them one and two. State one, state two. And uh, this Markov chain uh, is simple in the sense that from state one, you always make transition to state two. And from two, you always make transition to state one, right? Just, uh, just jump from one to two. And let's consider uh, this Markov chain. Because uh, the, the dynamics of this Markov chain is, uh, is just like this, and actually, let's consider the question like this. If we start with uh, uh, state two, then, so what is the probability that, so it make transitions to one by k stacks? What is the probability that it, it makes transition to two by k stacks, right? Actually, uh, it is very simple to see because uh, this Markov chain just uh, jumps like, like that. In from two by odd number of transitions, it must be in step one, uh, state one, right? And after an even number of transitions, it must be back to two, right? So in this case, if we consider the k step transition probability from two to one, you can see that. So this, uh, so this uh, case step transition probability will be zero if this k is even, right? And uh, because, uh, so if you wish to jump from two to one, you must, uh, you must have uh, an odd number of transitions. So in this case, so this transition probability from two to one by k steps is equal to one if k is odd, right? So in this case, you can see that if we consider so this transition probability two to one by k steps, then it could be zero, it could be one, alternatively, depending on whether k is an even number or an odd number. So if we think of the the, so this probability for such a thing, you see that as k goes large, then one, zero, one, zero, one, a sequence like this. So we know that such a sequence does not have a limit, right? Because zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, it jumps. So you can see here, I gave you an example of a Markov chain that does not have a limit distribution, right? Because uh, for a distribution, again, for a distribution to be a limit distribution, it must satisfy two conditions. The first, so, so such a thing, so this k step transition probability should have a limit. In that example, it doesn't have a limit, right? So. This is an example that it does not have a limit distribution. But actually, uh, I would I will let you know that. So for this for this uh, Markov chain, actually, it has a stationary distribution. So how can we see that? So that's the Markov chain we wish to consider, right? So, and we just argue that this Markov chain does not have a limit distribution, right? So for this Markov chain, we know that the transition matrix should look like that because uh, we just make transitions from one to two and then from two to one with probability one. So this is the transition probability. And then uh, we can consider if the initial distribution is, uh, is like this, half, half. Then let's check what is pi times p. 
pi hat p should be half off times, so this is a 2 by 2 matrix, right? So this row vector times the, the first column, then we just need to keep the, the second entry, right? So it says, so the result is here. And uh, if we consider, so this uh, half half times the second column, so you see it's a, uh, we just need to keep the first entry, so which is here. Because the first entry and the second entry of pi is the same, then you see it's a pi times p is equal to pi. So which means that, so this half half is a stationary distribution. If your initial distribution looks like that, then the distribution of your Markov chain is always like that. So for this Markov chain, for this very, very simple Markov chain, it does not have a limit distribution, but it has a stationary distribution, right? So you can see that different distribution and limit distribution are not the same thing. So stationary distribution could be broader. So a Markov chain may have a stationary distribution without a linear distribution. So this is an example. Let me check another example. So this time, the Markov chain is given by this uh, diagram. So you see that we have uh, uh, three states. And uh, from state one and two, you always go back to the same state. From one, with probability one, go back to one. From two, the same, right? But from three, uh, with probability uh, point 0.7, you will go to one. With uh, uh, probability point 0.3, you will go to two. So you can imagine. So the dynamics of this Markov chain, uh, if you start from either one or two, you just stay there, right? If uh, you, you, you go from, if you start with three, then after one step, you either go to one or two, and then stay there. So that's the, that's the dynamics of this Markov chain. So let's, let's, let's check what is the, what is the distribution? Uh, what is the what is the what is the distribution of mu k? So the distribution of this Markov chain after k steps of uh, transition. So this one actually. Uh, so this one, the the dynamics of this Markov chain, as I described, is is very simple. So if you start from one, you will always stay there. So which means that this mu k the distribution uh, at the k step will always be 1, 0, 0, which means that you stay at station 1 always, right? And also, if you start from 2, you stay at 2. And if you start from state 3, then with, point, with probability point 0.3, so you, you will go to 1 and then stay there forever. Because of this, so after k steps of transition, with point 0.7, you will, be, you will stay in state 1. With uh, point 0.3, you will stay in, in uh, state 2. Right? So you see, as long as k is bigger, or equal to one, it will no longer change for this Markov chain. So in this sense, you can see that if we consider transition uh, probabilities from i to j by k steps, as k goes large, because uh, because this new k does not change, the limit is there. It has a for each one, it must have a limit for each transition probability. It must have a limit. But can we call it a limit distribution of this Markov chain? No. Why not? Because you can see that. So these three distributions are not the same. 
So, as I said, if you start from one, you will stay in one. If you start from two, you will stay in two. If you start with three, then with point、uh, seven, you start, you will stay in one. With point three, you will start, you will stay in two. So, which means that, so the the distribution, as tables large, it will depend on your initial state. It will depend on your initial distribution, right? So, which means that, if we go back to check the definition of the limit distribution of the Markov chain, so we can see that this limit all always exists. In that example, right? However, this limit depends on your initial state. But for a, di a distribution to be a limit distribution, it should be independent of the, your initial state, right? So, so you see that in this example, actually, even if the transition probabilities have limits. But the limit does not really a limit distribution of the Markov chain, right? So that's another、uh, example. So then、uh, the question is,、uh, when will a Markov chain have a limit distribution that does not depend on the initial distribution, right? So that's a so that's a really、uh, the thing. We need to study today, and uh, uh, to answer this question, actually,、uh, we need to check、uh, properties of each state. So, to this end, maybe we need to first、uh, introduce uh, introduce uh, uh, some some notions. Notions first. So,、uh, <coughs> so here uh, maybe uh, let's uh, let's review. Let's first review、uh, some some notation. So、uh, recall that we use this、uh, T I J K to denote the. K-step transition probability from I to J, right? So initially, you're from I, and after K-steps, so what is the probability that you will be in J? So this is the K-step transition probability from I to J. And then、uh, here we also use a convention that we define the zero-step transition probability like this. If I and J are equal, then so this one is equal to one. Otherwise, this is zero. It is just a convention, right? So we define zero step transition probability. And then, given so these are、uh, uh, notation, so we can define、uh, accessibility and communication of、uh, states. So what what, what are they? So here we consider a Markov chain, and this Markov chain、uh, has a state space. In that state space, we have a bunch of states, right? And a state J is said to be accessible from say I if the transition probability from I to J by k steps is bigger than zero for some k. So what does it mean? It just means that. It is possible for you to make transition from I to J by whatever number of、uh, transitions, right? So as long as you can find some k such that、so、the k-step transition probability from I to J is bigger than zero, then J is said to be accessible from I. So the meaning again, the meaning of that is. It is possible for you to make transition from I to J. The probability could be small, but it's possible. So, 
This is the definition of uh, accessibility. So it's written in this way. We can go from I to J. So an arrow from I to J. And uh, if two states, I and J, are accessible to each other, then we say that they communicate. So the meaning is, if I and J are communicate, which means that it's possible for us to go from I to J, and also back to I, from J to I, right? It means they communicate. And because, uh, because uh, we, we define zero step transition probability like this, so as long as I and J are the same state, then it is equal to one, then according to this definition, all states must communicate with themselves. So this is, this is another convention. We just uh, accept that. All states communicate with themselves. Okay? So maybe before we move on, so let's, uh, let's check a very simple example so that you can have a better understanding of uh, accessibility. So suppose that we have a, a Markov chain uh, like this. So here I did not specify the uh, transition probabilities. But as long as so there's an arrow. Uh, you should understand that. So the probability, the transition probability, should be positive. Should be bigger than one. Right. So uh, so let's let's see. The question. The first question is: State three accessible from one. State three accessible from one. So yes or no. Should be yes, right? So it is possible that so we make transition from one to two because uh, there is error, right? And then from two to three. So state three is accessible from one. So again, we can make transition from one to two first, and then two to three. Do they communicate? So then we need to check whether one is accessible from three, right? And on the three to two, two to one. So one is accessible from three. So they communicate. So this is a very simple uh, example. So let's check another example. So this example, the Markov chain looks like that. Have four states. Uh, is state one accessible from three? One from three. So you see, it's possible for us to make transition from three to two and two to one. So one is accessible from three. Do they communicate? So from one, so you see that it must go back to itself, right? So that's a, the only so arrow all the work. So as long as you go into one, you stay there. So three is not accessible from one. So they do not communicate. Is state two accessible from four? Two and four. So four to three into two. So two accessible from four, right? Do they communicate? So let's see whether so there's a way we can go from two to four. Actually, if you check four, so you can see that so you can you can either go back to the same state. From four to four, or go all the four. There's no way, no way to go into four, right? So, so 
in this sense, you, you see that it's not, state four is not accessible from two. Because uh, according to this diagram, so it's, a, it's not accessible from any other states, right? So they do not communicate. So that's the, that is this uh, Markov chain. So now we know uh, what is uh, accessibility, uh, what is uh, communication, right? So roughly speaking, if we can go from one state to another state, then we say the other state is accessible from this state, right? And then, uh, so the next, the next notion is called class. So two states that communicate are said to be in the same class. So according to, to such a definition, we can see that a class of states is actually a set of states in which any two states communicate, right? So again, so, keep, so this class is a very important uh, notion for today's lecture. So again, two states that communicate or accessible from each other are said to be in the same class. So why this, this conception is important? Because later you will see if two states communicate, then they tend to share some properties. So again, so if a, this state has certain property, and because another state communicate with that, then so such a property tend to be shared by the other state. So that's why we need to study states in a class. In a class means that so within so this set of states, they are connected. Any two of them communicate. So in this sense, as long as we can show that any of them has certain properties, because they communicate, then such a property can be shared by all the class. So this is a very high level idea, and later so you will see uh, what does this mean. And actually, uh, according to so this definition, we can we can show that for a Markov chain, uh, each state can belong to only one class. It is not possible. In other words, it is not possible for a state to belong to two different classes. So why is so? And actually, this thing is uh, is very easy to prove. But roughly speaking, the, the idea would be like this. So suppose that, so there is uh, some state, maybe you call it state A, that belongs to two different classes. Two different classes means those two classes should have a different, different states. At least we can find some states that belong to one but not belong to two, right? So, so here we suppose that this uh, state A belongs to class one and class two. So these two classes are different. So then let's check. So suppose, so this B is a state in class one but not in class two. So because A and B are in the same class, which means that they communicate, right? And suppose this C is a state in class two, right? And because A and C are in the same class, they should communicate. So now you see that 
Because uh, A and B communicate, A and C communicate. As a result, B and C must communicate, right? B and C communicate, which means that they belong to the same class, right? So, in other words, solution B should be in the same class with C. But this is, this is a contradiction. It cannot happen. Because uh, we assume that B belongs to 1, but does not belong to 2. Because of this, so you see that by this very simple argument, each state must belong to one and only one class. And in other words, any two classes can either destroy it. Destroy it, again, means they have no common elements, no common states. If they have any common states, which means that they should be exactly the same of the same class, right? So that's a that's class. So again, why we wish to classify the state space into classes? Because uh, those states in a class tend to share same properties. So that's why we wish to study class by class. And then uh, according to this definition of class, we can define something called uh, irreducibility. A Markov chain is said to be irreducible if all states communicate. All state communicate means, means that there is only one class. The state space is a class of such a Markov chain. It is a irreducible Markov chain. So again, why we need, wish to study irreducible Markov chains? Because it has only one class. So all states there tend to share the same properties. So that's a that's why uh, we introduced the irreducible Markov chains. So let's check. That's a that's not exercise. Is the Markov chain on page 43 irreducible? So this Markov chain, right? Is this uh, irreducible? So I think it's very simple. For example, if we check one and two. Of course, they communicate, right? Two and three, they communicate. As long as one and two communicate, two and three communicate, and then one and three communicate. So this is an irreducible Markov chain. So this chain, Markov chain, are uh, irreducible? Of course not, right? Because uh, we just argued that. The one and three do not communicate. Two and four do not communicate. Right? So, which means that it must have more than one classes. And can you see that how many classes does this Markov chain has? So maybe we can we can we can check that in this way. So first of all. You can see that two and three communicate, right? They must belong to the same class. Then the question is, does this class has uh, other states, right? Maybe we can check one. Of course, say one, we can, one is accessible from two, but as we argued, two is not accessible from one, right? as long as the goal into one is stay there forever. So one, so no other states accessible from one. So this one itself must be a class, right? It, do not, it does not communicate, uh, communicate with other states. So one is a class. Now let's check this uh, four. From four, we can go to one, we can go to three, we can 
go back to itself, right? But as long as you go to other places, you never go back, right? So what does it mean? It means the four is not accessible from other states, right? So in this sense, four cannot communicate with others. So four itself should be a class. So see that in this example, we have three classes. Two and three form a class because they communicate, right? One, so one is just a no, uh, no other space are accessible from one. So one itself is a class. But four, so four is not accessible from other states. So four itself is a class. In this example, we have three classes, right? And then uh, let's consider another example. So suppose that we have a Markov chain so that has a transition matrix uh, given by that. So if you check this uh, transition matrix, you can see we have four states, right? From the first one, it can only go to the second one. From the second one, it can only go to the first one. From the third one, it can only go to the fourth one. From the fourth one, it can only go to the third one. So you can see that this Markov chain should look like that. Is this Markov chain reducible? Of course not, right? Because uh, according to this uh, transition diagram, it looks like two Markov chains. So even if uh, we put them together into one transition matrix, but you can see that there's no interaction between one, two, and three and four. So here, it is very clear that, so this Markov chain, so one and two will behave as a smaller chain, and three and four will be a smaller chain. And actually, uh, you can check that. So, so this example is uh, pretty similar to This example, it has a it has a stationary distribution. Stationary distribution means that so pi times p is equal to pi, right? And it is not difficult to see. So this uh, stationary distribution is not even unique. So why is so? Because we can we can check a distribution, initial distribution given by by this. So this p, this order of this p, is an arbitrary number between 0 and 1. So this initial distribution is uh, p over 2, p over 2, 1 minus p over 2, 1 minus p over 2, right? So keep in mind that so the transition matrix looks, looks like that. So let's check what will happen if this pi times p. Again, uh, so this is the chain we wish to study, right? And uh, pi is given by this this factor, and this matrix is uh, is p, right? Transition matrix. Let's see what would happen if. Uh, pi times p. So for example, this is the first column of p. Pi times the first column. Actually, because uh, there's only one here, so this, this entry will be here. So red circle times red circle is here, which is the first one. And if this uh, uh, distribution times the second 
the second column. Actually, you see that is a 2p times this one would be here, right? If we did, so the same, so the same thing would happen for the for this thing times the third one, the fourth one. So you see, it's a pi times p is equal to this. So in this example, actually, you see that no matter what this p is, as long as it's uh, something between zero and one, and you can check that those four numbers add up to one, right? And then, so for all such distributions, they are stationary. So which means that for this Markov chain, the stationary distribution is not unique. It has a infinitely many stationary distribution. But actually, uh, we can we can prove that if a Markov chain is irreducible, so which means that it has only one class. In other words, any two states communicate. Then, and if uh, so, the state space is finite. Then, it must have a unique stationary distribution. Unique distribution, unique stationary distribution means that if you wish to solve the balance equations together with the normalization equation, there is only one solution. So which is nice, right? But again, so this unique stationary distribution does not mean that that distribution is a linear distribution, right? So if we check this very simple example, so it's irreducible, right? And the state space is finite. It has only two states. So according to that proposition, if you solve the balance equations, then you can have only one station distribution. So this very simple chain actually has only one station distribution of R. But we know that that chain does not have a limit. And uh, another notion uh, I need to I need to introduce is the is so-called period of the state. So what is a period? The, the definition of a period is like this. It's not a very straightforward thing. So here uh, we need to consider an arbitrary state in a state space. Maybe we call it state J. For this uh, state J, uh, let's consider the transition probability from J to J by K steps. So this K is an arbitrary uh, positive integer. From J to J by K steps. So for a, in this definition, uh, we need to consider this uh, K step transition probability from K, J to J, which is positive which is bigger than zero. So which means that, so given this, so what, what is the meaning of this? If this probability is bigger than zero, which means that it's possible for me to go from J back to J by K steps, right? From J back to J by K steps. So then we need to collect all such Ks. So what kind of case? You can go from J back to J by K steps. We collect all such case. And the period of state J is defined as the greatest common divisor of such case. What K? You can go from J back to J by K steps for all such case. The greatest common divisor is defined as the period of state J. It, doesn't, it does not look very nice. So it does not look very easy to understand. But maybe 
I can give you this example to think of this. So maybe uh, I need to first uh, explain what is the greatest common divisor in case that you're not sure of this. So what is the greatest common divisor? So this, what is this GCD? So we consider a set of positive integers. The greatest common divisor of that is just the largest integer that divides all integers in that set. Again, the greatest common divisor is the largest integer that divides all integers in that set. So for example, what is the greatest common divisor of 4, 8, 18, and 24? Of course, for those four numbers, one is a common divisor. So one divides all of them, but it is not the largest one, right? Because uh, all those four numbers are even numbers. So at least two is a common divisor, right? So then the question is whether this two is the biggest one. It turns out that it, it, you cannot find uh, any bigger integer that is uh, uh, that is a common divisor, right? If you try four, try six, then so they cannot divide that. So this a uh, GCD of this set of integers would be two, right? What is the greatest common divisor of 18, uh, 27, and uh, 63? So you can check that it's, uh, it's three. So they have two common divisors, one and three. And this, uh, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it should be nine, right? It should be nine. It's nine. So it has three uh, common divisors, one, three, and nine. And uh, the greatest one should be nine. And what is the greatest common divisor between 5, 9, and uh, 18? It should be 1, right? So that's the uh, greatest common divisor. And the period of the state is defined as the greatest common divisor by such case. So what kind of case? By case that you can go from J back to J. So you collect all such case. The greatest common divisor is defined as the period. So maybe we can check uh, what is the period of uh, state one of this Markov chain. So here, this Markov chain is very simple, and we know that go from one back to one, you can, you can use two steps, right? One to two, back to one. Or four steps, one, Two, one, two, one, right? And also, for the same reason, so we can, as long as you go after an even number of steps, it will go from one to one. So for this, so what is the period of this Markov chain? It should be two, right? Two is the greatest common divisor of uh, all such case. So again, for this Markov chain, you can go from one back to one by two steps, four steps, six steps, and so on, right? By all even numbers of steps, you will go from one back to one. What is the greatest common divisor of all even numbers is two. So two is the period of this Markov chain, right? So why we're interested in the period of the Markov chain? And actually, from this example, so you can see that 
you may have realized that if the state, if the, the period of a state is is bigger than one, then so this state should not have a limit distribution, right? So why is so? Maybe we can check that. So here, if we consider this Markov chain, and uh, let's think of what is the transition probability from one to one by k steps, right? As we argue that if k is equal to one, two, three, and so on, then this transition probability will be zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, right? So as I argued, so the the period of this Markov chain is two. So which means that if we consider so this transition probability, the non-zero entries will only appear after periods, right? After two steps, it's possible for us to see a non-zero entry. After another period, it's possible for us to see a non-zero entry. So between them are zero entries. So for such a sequence, you see that it must be zero, non-zero, then a bunch of zeros, non-zero, a bunch of zeros, non-zeros, right? For such a sequence, it cannot have a, a limit. If it cannot have a limit, so it cannot have a limit distribution, right? So that's why if a, a state has a limit distribution, this state cannot be period, cannot be periodic. The period of that must be equal to one. If it's bigger than one, there's no way for it to have a, a limit distribution. So here, so <coughs> if a state has a period of one, it's said to be aperiodic. If uh, a state has a, uh, has a period which is bigger than one, so then this state is called periodic. For a state to have a limit distribution, the period of that must be one. In other words, it must be aperiodic. Why is so? As I argued, otherwise, the transition probability will look like zeros, non-zero, zeros, non-zero, zeros, non-zero, something like that. So such a sequence cannot have a limit, right? So can you see the, the period of uh, state one of this Markov chain? Actually, for this Markov chain, it is possible we go from one to two to three to one, so which is uh, three, right? So which means that p one one three is bigger than zero, and it is also possible that we go from one to two back to one. P one one two is bigger than zero, right? So what is the common greatest common divisor between two and three? So which is one. So this mark of chain is aperiodic. Because some people may be confused because they think of it goes this way, either this way or this way. It looks like uh, the period of that is three, but it, it's, it's not. The period of this mark of chain is one. Even if you cannot go from one to one by one step, it's not possible for this mark of chain. But the period of state one is one. So again, for this mark of chain, you cannot go from one back to one by one step. But the period of this state one is still one. Because the greatest common divisor of this is one.
So, so there is a, a very useful proposition. It says that. Uh, so, two states communicating with each other must have the same period. So, so here, suppose I and J communicate, then the period of them must be the same. So this, uh, <coughs> actually, this uh, uh, proposition uh, suggests that so this uh, period is a so-called class property. So what does class property mean? Means uh, if one state has this property, then all states in the same class share the same property. So this uh, uh, period is a is a class property. So this is very nice because, uh, so for example, we know that for this Markov chain, as I argue that actually, sort of the state one has. Uh, as period one, right? Then what is the what is the, 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 the period of two and three? So you see that this Markov chain is uh, irreducible. In other words, any two states communicate, so all states must have the same period. As long as you find out that one has period one, two, three must have the same period. So, because of this, uh, we know that an irreducible Markov chain has uh, only one class. So, in other words, uh, for an uh, irreducible Markov chain, any two states must communicate, right? And then, according to this proposition, for an irreducible Markov chain, all states should have the same period. And uh, uh, again, so if the period is one, then so we say that we say that an irreducible Markov chain is aperiodic. So previously we talked about whether a state is periodic or aperiodic. But as long as this Markov chain is irreducible, then all states should have the same period. Then we can talk about whether an irreducible Markov chain is periodic. Or aperiodic, right? And also, uh, as I argued previously, if a Markov chain is periodic, which means that the period of each state is bigger than one, so such a Markov chain cannot have a linear distribution. So next, let's uh, uh, discuss. Uh, Another another notion uh, about Markov chains, which is called recurrence, and uh, uh, a closely related notion called treasures. So let's see what does it mean. So to introduce those two notions, actually we need to consider uh, a quantity. Maybe we call it tau. So this uh, quantity is defined for each state. Uh, maybe we call it state J. So this tau j is defined as the smallest k such that x k is equal to j. So what does this mean? So here uh, we know that we use this uh, x to denote the Markov chain, right? So then x k is is the state. So at time k, or after k steps of the transition, right? So So this tau j would be the smallest k such that x k is equal to j. x k is equal to j means at time k the Markov chain is in state j. 
But this K should be the smallest such a thing. So then, which means that this tau J should be the first time that this Markov chain makes transitions to say J. So again, so you start with uh, time zero. You have an initial state, initial distribution, whatever. From this initial state, you make transitions to other states. The first time you make transition to state J, that time is called this tau J. It's the first time you make transitions to J. State J is said to be recurrent if, so this conditional probability is equal to 1. So let's see what is this conditional probability. So you start from state J. X0 is equal to J. You start from that. Then I need to consider tau J. What is this tau J? Tau J is the first time you back, go back to J. So this probability is that the probability that you go from J back to J by finite time. So the probability that you go from J back to J by finite time is equal to 1. Then this J is said to be recurrent. What does it mean? It means that if you can go from J and you can always go back to J by finite time. Then this J is said to be recurrent. So again, the meaning of that is, is like this. A state J is said to be recurrent if you can go from that and by finite time, you can always go back to that. So such a state is called recurrent state. Right? So of course, for certain states, it is possible that you go from that state, then after some time, with certain probability, you will never go back. Such a state is called a transient state. So again, a transient state means that if you go from that state, then with certain probability, you can never go back. Such a state is called a transient state. So maybe let's see. So what? So for this Markov chain, what are the recurrent state and transient state? You see that. So for example, let's, let's check 1, right? We know that from 1, it can go back to itself or go to 2, right? But you see that because this Markov chain is irreducible, all states can communicate, right? And then you, you may go to 2 and uh, go to 3, but the probability that you will always stay in 2 or 3 will be extremely small after if a, after many, many steps of transition, right? So in this sense, actually, you can see that this a 1 must be a recurrent state. Even if the transitions are random, but, as, but you can expect that. So as long as you go from 1, you can always go back. Maybe you need to wait for a long time, but, it, 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 but you can always expect will be back. So 1 must be recurrent. And for the same reason, 2 and 3 must be recurrent, right? But if we check this, this Markov chain, we can see that the, the story could be different. Maybe we can, we can first check state 4. We know that state 4, so of course you can go from 4 to 4. But as long as you go all side, you will never be back, right? 
Can you stay in Fort Forever? Maybe you're so lucky you can stay there for a long period of time. But as time goes to infinity, you will always go outside. As long as you go outside, you will, be, you will not be back. So in this sense, this war must be a treasure state, right? Then, let's check two and three. We know that two and three, so they communicate. They belong to the same class, right? So, are they recurrent or transient? Maybe it's a it's simpler for us to consider two first. Of course, so from two we can go back to yourself or go to three and uh, whatever, right? But there's always a chance that as long as you go back to two, with certain probability you will go to one. So this one looks like a trap, right? As long as you go into one, you have to stay there forever. You will never go out of one. Right? So in this sense, you can see that the two must be a treasure state. It's, it's a, it has chances it will go back. It may go back to itself many, many times. But because this mark of chain will evolve indefinitely, sooner or later, you will go to one. As long as you go into one, you'll be trapped there. You'll never be back. So this two must be a transient state, right? So how about three? For three, I think it's similar. You can go back to three, you can go to two. But unfortunately, as long as you go to two, so there's a certain chance that you will go to one. If you go to one, you'll be trapped there. You will never be back. So three is also a treasure state, right? So then, how about one? Is it recurrent or transient? It must be recurrent, right? Because uh, from one, you can only go back to itself. So here you can see that for this mark of chain, it has three treasure states, and one the current state. So, for such a Markov chain, you can imagine that no matter what is your initial state, whether it's a one, two, three, or four, after a amount of time, as long as you go into one, you'll be trapped there. So, for this Markov chain, no matter what is your initial state, eventually you will go to one as needed, right? So, this one is like a black hole. So, so here you can see that actually, by this argument, indeed, for transition states and uh, the current states, for a mark of chain, and after a long period of time, so you will be only in the current states. As the name suggests, Contrast means that you cannot stay there forever. You can only stay there by a finite time. After, you know, as long as the time is, uh, is sufficiently long, you will no longer visit transient states. Right? So, here, we're, so this, this, so this behavior can also be interpreted as this. If uh, you start with a recurrent state, because you can always be back. So the mark of chain will visit the recurrent state infinitely many times. You go from the recurrent state, you can always be back. And because uh, the mark of chain will evolve indefinitely, so essentially the current state will be visited infinitely many times. And uh, in contrast, for transient states, so they can only be visited finite times. Or, in other words, after some time, you can no longer visit transient states. Right? So this 
means that if we consider the Sartre transition probability from I to J by K steps, if this J is a transition state, no matter I is recurrent or transient or whatever, then K is large. So this probability will converge to zero, which means that after a long period of time from any state, you can no longer visit transition states. So that is uh, uh, that is about this. I think I, I, can, I can finish it maybe around in uh, half an hour. So is that okay if we don't have a break today? That's fine, right? Okay, so then that's, uh, we can. We can, we, can, we can go earlier. So uh, another thing is called, another uh, notion is called positive recurrence. So what does this positive recurrence mean? Positive recurrence is defined in this way. The first, we know that the tau j is the first time we visit j, right? So that's the definition of tau j. Then we consider a conditional expectation like this. We start from state j. What is the expected time that we, we visit j for the first time after time zero? So if this expected time is finite, then this state J is set to be positive recurrent. So this uh, definition of positive recurrence is, uh, is different from recurrent. Recurrent means that, so this tall J, the first time you visit J must be finite with probability one. But actually, it is possible that even if uh, the probability that is a finite width is, is one, it is possible that the expectation of that is, uh, could be infinite. If the expectation of that is finite, then this state is said to be positive recurrent. So, more specifically, positive recurrence means that if I go from this state, then the expected time I will go back to the same state will be finite. So such a thing, such a state is called positive recurrent. Again, recurrent means that from this state, I can always go back to this, the same state. But the positive recurrent means from this state, the expected time to go back to the same state will be finite. You may not realize the, the, the real difference between those two States, but actually, I can tell that tell you that. So, this positive recurrence is a stronger uh, is a stronger notion than this. All if a state is a positive recurrent, it must be recurrent. But it is possible that a state is a recurrent, but it's not a positive recurrent. So, if it's not if it's a recurrent but not positive recurrent, uh, it's said to be null non-recurrent, but it's uh, not required in our course. So this is a positive recurrent. So uh, maybe uh, I can give you a, a simple example to see, uh, to review the notion of positive recurrence. Uh, we have uh, a Markov chain uh, like this. It has two states, one and two. So with, with probability of 0.5, we go from 1 to 1, or we go from 1 to 2. But from 2, we always go back to 1. So such a, such a Markov chain. And for this Markov chain, uh, so let's check whether this uh, state 1 is positive recurrent. To, to calculate this uh, uh, expected time uh, back to the same state, then we need to find out the, the 
distribution first. So let's see, uh, what is the probability that we go from 1 to 1 by one step? So because this tau 1 is the first time you go back to 1, right? So then if a tau 1 is equal to 1, which means that so it's, uh, we go back to 1 by just one step. So this one, as I said, because, uh, so that because the first time you go back to 1 is 1, which means that x1 should be equal to 1. So this probability is just a transition probability from 1 to 1 by one step, which is this uh, point 0.5. And it is also possible that in the first step, you go to 2 and then back to 1, right? In this case, you need two steps back to 1. So for this probability actually is given by this, right? So you start from 1, but in the first step, you need to go to other, step, uh, other states and then back to 1. So what is this probability? So you just uh, go from 1 to 2. That, that's the first transition probability. And then get back to 1. So that's a 0.5 times 1, also 0.5, right? So you see that, that this example is very simple. So for after at least two steps, you must go back from 1 to 1, right? And because of this, so this uh, uh, expected time is just uh, with 0.5, you will get back by one step with 0.5 by two steps. So here you can see it's uh, the expected time to go back to 1 is just 1.5. So according to this, this definition of 1.5 is a finite number, so it's the uh, state 1 must be positive recurrent, right? So this is a, this is a simple example. And uh, I think, so, so, so this result is, 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 is more important because uh, recurrence, transients, and positive recurrence can be proved that they are all class properties. So what does class property mean? It means that we consider a class. So what is a class? Class is a set of states communicating with each other. If we pick any two states from a class, they must communicate, right? What does communicating mean? It means you can go from one to the other, from the other to the state, right? So all these properties are class properties. So which means that, so if you consider a class, as long as you can show that one state is recurrent, then all of them should be recurrent. If one of them is transient, all of them should be transient, and so on. Okay. So then, for as a special case, if a Markov chain is irreducible, again, irreducible means it has only one class, then as long as it's a recurrent or transient or possibly recurrent, then all of the all the states should be should have the same property. Right? In this sense, so we can say this Markov chain is recurrent or transient or positive recurrent and so on. Right? So so there's a, a very useful proposition for you to to test whether uh, a Markov chain is positive or current. An irreducible Markov chain that has a finite state space must be positive or current. Actually, this, this result is not difficult to understand. A Markov chain is irreducible. It means all states communicate with each other, right? All states communicate with each other, and it has only, so the state space is finite. You have only finitely many states. So such a Markov chain must be positive recurrent, which means that, so from any state, 
because there is only five remaining other states. Actually, you cannot stay in all other states too long. You don't have much choices to go elsewhere, right? So then, with a relatively short time, you must be back. And for such a month of chain. So it is not difficult to show that there must be positive recurrence, which means that the expected time to back to an estate must be finite. Right? So let's check this. It's a, a Markham chain on page 43, positive recurrent. Is this Markham chain positive recurrent? It is uh, irreducible, right? It has only three states, right? So it must be positive recurrent, right? Is this, uh, is this Markov chain positive recurrent? Actually, it does not make sense for us to, to discuss this because uh, this Markov chain is not irreducible, right? Different states. They have different properties. So we know that this one is a recurrent state. We argue that. And uh, it must be positive recurrent. Because as long as you're in one, you must go back to the self. The expected time is just, uh, just one, right? For other states, the transition states, they cannot be positive recurrent, right? For the entire chain, have three different classes, it does not make sense to, to say whether this Markov chain is recurrent or transition or positive recurrent, right? So that is uh, uh, about this. So uh, <coughs> We have uh, the theorem. So this is uh, this is a long one. Uh, so this theorem actually uh, gives you conditions to answer uh, the question we raised at the beginning of this lecture: how to tell whether a uh, Markov chain has a limit distribution, right? And uh, so, how to tell whether the balanced equations has a unique solution, and so on. So here, uh, <coughs> if a Markov chain is uh, irreducible, aperiodic, so which is nice, right? Because uh, here, I gave you so this example. For this example, this Markov chain is not irreducible, right? It has two classes. As a result, this Markov chain does not have a unique stationary distribution, right? So this, uh, this is not, not something nice. So because of this example, we may wish to consider irreducible, irreducible Markov chains, right? Because otherwise, they may not have a unique stationary distribution. And in this example, this is a, a simple example of periodic Markov chains. And uh, as I argued, for such Markov chain, it cannot have a limit distribution. Because uh, the transition probability of that it looks like uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 stuff, right? And it cannot have a, a limit distribution. So this is something we need to rule out. So because of this, uh, we only consider irreducible aperiodic Markov chains. Only for such chains it is possible for us to, it, it is only possible for, 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 for them to have a limit distribution, right? And uh, uh, for such a Markov chain, so suppose this P is the transition matrix of that. And uh, suppose, assume that so this Markov chain has a stationary distribution. So which means that if we wish to solve, so this balance equations together with the uh, 
uh, normalization equation, we have at least one solution. We try to solve that. So you have solutions. Then, in this case, we have uh, uh, several results. The first result, this Markov chain has positive recurrence. Irre irreducible, hyperodic, and uh, it has stiffer distributions. Then, it must be positive recurrent. Positive recurrent means from any state, the expected time back to the same state will be finite. So that's a, that's a nice uh, property. And also, this Markov chain has a limit distribution. Limit distribution means the transition probability from I to J, as K goes large, will have a limit. And this limit will not depend on the initial distribution. It has a limit distribution, right? And also, so it, is a, it has a limit distribution. The limit distribution must be stationary distribution, right, as we argued. And for this limit distribution, each entry of this limit distribution is positive. It means that in a steady state, so it is possible for you in any of the states. This is not difficult to understand because this Markov chain is irreducible, right? All states are connected. So this pi j must be bigger than zero. And the last property, so this stationary distribution must be unique. So, this is the so-called nice Markov chain. Irreducible, hyperodic, and it has spatial distribution. As long as the Markov chain satisfies these three conditions, then it must be positive recurrent. It has a limit distribution. And uh, in the limit distribution, the probability in any state must be positive, and also the spatial distribution is the unique. Spatial distribution will be the same as the limit distribution. So here you can see that we do not require the state space is finite. So even if this Markov chain has infinitely many states, it does not matter. As long as it satisfies these three conditions, it's a nice one, and has those are very nice properties. So uh, here, uh, actually, we have an uh, example, but uh, this is an example of uh, infinite state space. I think I can leave it to you. If you have time, you can, you can check that. And actually, uh, so that's the last example, and we just uh, uh, conclude the, the lecture. So that's everything uh, I wish to share with you. So questions? Questions?